course, fish is one of those things that I love to do on the grill. The problem uh, with doing fish on the grill, though, is that a lot of the times, fish is so tender, I mean, look at this thing, kind of falls apart in your hand, that it's tough to cook on the grill without breaking it into a thousand pieces. A lot of people just use foil. I don't love using foil because you don't get the grill marks on there. So first part of this, and then I'll give you a quick recipe, is how not to get that fish to stick to the grill. And the key is in two things. First of all, like my dad always told me, use the right tool for the job. This is about a $10 piece of equipment. It'll save your $10 cut of fish the first time you use it. So it is actually worth having it so you don't waste money uh, on putting good fish on the grill. The other key, you got to oil the grates. And not just toss your grill on high and throw down uh, oil on the grate. Because that's what happens, or that's what you'll, do, what you'll do basically is hit the smoke point of the oil. So every oil, of course, burns at some point. This canola oil, which I prefer to use over vegetable oil, smokes at about like 410 to 430. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your grates, first of all, are below that temperature. I'm sitting here, the grill temp is just over 400. It's well below 450, which is where that stuff will definitely start to smoke down on the grates. So that's good. You can actually see a little glistening to the grates. I do it about three or four times, and all I do is I just take a piece of paper towel or whatever and I put some canola oil on it which can admittedly be a little messy sometimes so I'll do it over the ground you just put a little on there just like that kind of fold it up a bit and then because your grill is now hot at this point you take a pair of tongs and you just rub that guy right on there right just like that you can see it on there what you don't want to see is your grill to be super hot and smoking while you do this you see you can still see it glistening it's not just all evaporating what that means is the grates are below the smoke point so you're not going to get that burnt kind of fried food taste on there which of course you don't want on an expensive piece of fish the other thing that i do is i also put a little bit of this on the fish so i just wash my hands of course i'm going to be touching fish now and you'll notice you just kind of rub it on there put a little on if you want to put a dry rub on your fish then you can go ahead and do that too. So we're going to toss that fish on the grill right now. Go ahead and just toss it up on there. There you go. We'll do it like that so we get the good char marks. And the other one. By the way, when you're cooking fish to make sure it doesn't stick to the grill, the fish will tell you when it's ready to be released. I know that sign's kind of meta or whatever, uh, but seriously, if you go to try and lift it up and it doesn't lift, I'm gonna close this up for you, Corey, uh, then that means that the fish is just not ready to flip yet. So this will jump back up to about four. The rule two on cooking fish is you want about 10 minutes or eight to 10 minutes per inch of fish. So if it's an inch thick, put it on four minutes aside, flip it over. Another thing here is the recipe. So this is so super crazy easy and we're gonna put this on our website. It'll be under the good day tab. What you want to do is you want to, well, first of all, let's throw this pineapple on the grill too. I forgot about that. I like grilled pineapple. This is a pineapple salsa. So we put the pineapples right on the grill. Forget about them. They'll be done by the time the fish is done. You flip them over once and that's all good. So that's part of the recipe. You need about two rings of fresh pineapple. I don't want to touch anything else because that's actually going to go on the salsa before I wash my hands. The last thing I want to do is cross contaminate. So a quarter cup, a drop of green peppers, quarter cup of tomatoes right there. About a quarter cup of uh, red onion, quarter cup of that is jalapeno, about a, or I should say a, a fourth of a cup of that, about a quarter cup of uh, chives, and then some cilantro as well for taste. You can do anywhere between one and about three tablespoons of cilantro. It depends on how much cilantro you want. I know people that love it. I know people that hate it. I'm in the kind of lukewarm category at this point. So all these fresh vegetables, they go on the cooked uh, pineapple on top of the fish. It's simple. It takes like 10 minutes to prepare, and it's an absolutely delicious meal. You squeeze a little lime on it, and you're all set. So that's that. That's how you guys do that. For your weather, as I mentioned, it'll be great through the next couple of days. Great for grilling, although you do have to watch out for those scattered showers and thunderstorms during the afternoons. Whoa, he is the man. You're the man, Dutra. Thank you very much. That it's, was it's, awesome. It's so good. I got two pieces of fish. You guys better hurry out. Two, here that's you all you brought was two pieces of fish. Well, you know, I used the station card. You know they're not going to let you me buy not $40 of fish. <laughs> you are the stingy man. It looks hey, great. Oh, it's not me. Listen, I'd throw a fish party if I could. I'll be there in nine minutes, Get so I'll here. see you then, party. because the fish, you got the chicken, the fish is my jam, Ken. What's a fish part? I, I don't know, I wasn't invited the to the PH. chicken jamboree either. Right, exactly. <laughs> this is my jamboree. jam right here, and this tastes terrible. <laughs> All loaded with iron and whatnot.